Hello, myself, Dr. Kumar. Welcome all of you to the beautiful world of physiotherapy. Pain, one of the biggest topic. The pain, where is it coming from? Is a question everybody has in our mind. So today I am explaining from where the pain is coming. Either it is a elbow pain, 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 pain. Everybody is saying pain and visiting to a physiotherapist. What is the source of pain? Just because a patient complains of pain at a certain site, it doesn't necessarily mean that the site is the source of all or even any of the patient's pain. This is an essential concept for any clinician dealing with muscular skeletal pain. Pain is perceived by any of the pain sensitive nerve endings that are present extensively throughout the body. These nerve endings known as nociceptor nerve endings are found within bone, cartilage, ligaments, muscles, tendons, fascia, bursa and neural structures. Stimulation to these nociceptive nerves ending will result in individual perceiving pains. Nerve endings may be stimulated by chemicals such as potassium ion, histamine, 5 hydroxytryptamine plasma kinase and prostaglandin released from damaged tissues as we are showing in this figure. How mast cells, neutrophils, macrophages, TH17 cells all release some chemicals which stimulate the nociceptive neurons as you are seeing on the screen also. Therefore, the pain that patient perceives and describes to a clinician is the sum of all the stimulated pain sensitive nerve endings, not just one. As we can see in the mechanism, if somebody got hurt on the finger side or anywhere on the body very distal, then the nociceptors present below the skin get stimulated and reaches to the spinal cord, signal reaches spinal cord and then to the brain where we perceive the pain as we see in this pain pathway. So we can see here the first and stimulus from the peripheral part, the pain stimulus activate the pain receptors that send signals along the specialized pain nerve to the spinal cord. Second, that is a relay. Synapsis is the spinal cord connect the signal to the neural pathway. The signal can be inhibited or amplified during this process. In some cases, the pain signals also lead to activation of a motor neuron that triggers the muscle reflex. Then the third point when the signals moving to the towards the brain. The pain signals are processed in different parts of the brain and our senses, sensation of the pain develops. This is affected by thoughts, feelings and expectation from frontal cerebral cortex, which is related with thoughts and expectation. Somatosensory cortex processes the type and location of pain. Limbic system, emotional processing. What is the type of pain and what is the connection with it? And the fourth one we can see the brain regenerates the signals that descends along the spine and either inhibits or amplifies the pain signals in the spine. Here I am showing some more things such as inflammatory cells, maybe because of any injury, cancer cells, damaged tissues or osteolysis, osteophytes formation due to osteolysis produces noxious factors like bradykinine, prostaglandin, nerve growth factors, serotonin, ATPs, hydrogen ions, all these stimulate the nociceptors. And these sensory neurons goes to the dorsal root ganglion, to the spinal cord and then to the brain, where brain signals as if it is under the pain. And we can see in a different way that the periphery afferent neurons can be stimulated by non-nonscious mechanical stimulus like feather touch, soft touch, 
noxious mechanical stimulus like hammer or anything hitting or any road traffic accident noxious heat or chemical stimuli which can move through a beta fiber a delta fiber c fiber all have different fibers sensory fibers which can reach to the dorsal root ganglion of the spinal cord and then moving to the higher level towards the brain now we can move towards the pain producing structures there are three major groups of structure causing musculoskeletal pain such as joints which include ligaments muscles including tendons and fascia and neural structures in response to the localized inflammatory process the pain and inflammation there will be associated muscle spasm and possibly also direct chemical stimulation of nociceptive nerve endings in the muscles as the pain and spasm persist it is likely that small areas of fibrosis may develop within the muscle further stimulating nociceptor nerve endings are got stimulated joints are the first part we can move in different way all joints within the body are richly innervated these nerve endings may be stimulated chemically as a result inflammation or mechanically as a result of stretch any abnormality of the movement within a joint can result in a stretching of the joint tissues and stimulation of the nociceptive nerve endings abnormality may occur either in physiological movements or accessory movement here we have to learn physiological movements are the movement that patient can perform by themselves accessory movements are the involuntary intra articular movements such as glides rotation and tilts which occur in both spinal and peripheral joints during the normal physiological movements loss of these accessory movement may cause pain and altered range or abnormal quality of the movement thus restoration of normal movements is an essential part of treating the musculoskeletal joints and their injuries okay leading to hypermobility hypermobility or abnormal quality of the movement then the second structure is muscles including the tendons and fascia muscles tendon fascia are also richly supplied with nociceptive nerve endings muscles spasm occur to protect the underlying damaged tissues such as joints if pain and inflammation from the joint injury persists muscle spasm will also persist and increase of muscle tension will lead to both chemical and mechanical stimulation of nociceptive nerve endings chronic muscle tightness abnormal movement or overuse may result in localized muscles localized areas of muscles thickening that represent the areas of inflammation and fibrosis lack of full pain free motion will eventually causes stimulation of nociceptive nerve endings and pain next is trigger points trigger points represent all the patients with chronic musculoskeletal pain travel and simmons have defined a trigger point as a discrete focal hyper irritable spot in a taut band of muscles an active trigger point causes pain at rest it is tender to palpation with referred pain pattern that is similar to the patient pain complaint then a latent trigger point or tender point is locally tender does not refer pain does not elicit a twitch response then the third structure which is involved we can see a trigger point here and then print producing structure is neural structure it is primarily due to the impingement and sensory secondary due to the prolapsed intervertebral disc or osteophyte formation we can see here this is the spinal tract behind the backbone and how the dorsal and ventral root canals are been seen here and this is how a disc is been impinging the nerve endings due to prolapsed intervertebral disc 
so we can see the neural structure how they are working like the other structure neural structures have nociceptive nerve endings that may result may be stimulated chemically by local inflammation of surrounding and injured structures or mechanically either by direct trauma or by acute prolonged stretch neural tension the assessment of neural mechanics and neural tension is an important component of the clinical examination neural provocation test assess the mobility of neural tissues in the extremities and spinal canal many factors causes hypermobility of neural tissues including scar tissue tight muscles ectopy bone growth and adhesions with nerves then we have to move to referred pain how a pain is referred from one place to another there are two types of referred pain radicular pain is the pain associated with nerve root compression and has characteristic quality of sharp shooting pain in relatively narrow bands where is somatic pain the other type of referred pain somatic pain is the pain perceived in one area that originates from another somatic pain refers may be in the form of myofascial trigger points or from joints there is another term we can normally hear myofascial pain syndrome myofascial pain syndrome is a local painful muscle disorder caused by myofascial trigger points and another similar word is fibromyalgia it is a generalized condition more common in female and associated with the presence of multiple tender points now we are moving for the treatment physiotherapy as this is a world of physiotherapy first we are moving towards the joint pain we can introduce exercise therapy includes active and passive range of motion exercises strength training joint mobilization exercises or a helpful electrotherapy could be in with heat using wax infrared radiation ift tens or laser therapy with far infrared followed by ultrasound therapy hydrotherapy underwater weight training and swimming have good impact on joints yoga yoga also plays an important role by increasing the tensile strength and blood oxygen saturation level now muscular pain let's see what are helpful exercise therapy includes warm up exercises muscle stretching massage therapy manual therapy and all are very useful electrotherapy can be used as short wave shock wave diathermy ift cold laser therapy or extra corporeal shock wave therapy for trigger points followed by ultrasound therapy hydrotherapy may warm water with warm water bath and swimming exercises are very helpful yoga which can include clinical yoga with pranayam helps a lot increasing the oxygen saturation neuronal structure what is the role of physiotherapy here nerve impingement syndrome can be treated by swd followed by neuromobilization followed by tens and ift whereas pivd we can start with swd for infrared heating followed by passive traction spine mobilization and by the application of laser or ultrasound therapy <coughs> postural correction exercises breathing exercise relaxation activities like meditation deep sleep music all are important thank you please subscribe and like your advices are very valuable for us to increase the demand thank you so much